Hello everybody, Pastor Jerome here. Just wanted to share some stuff with you and, and try to strengthen strengthen that that remains. Those of you who are still trying to conduct your life in a way that pleases God. I, I believe so many people have just given up on the idea of trying to, to live a life that's pleasing to God. And those are the ones who say, well, nobody's perfect and I'm not perfect. And well, are you trying to be? You know, I've never seen the church in such a position that where it even despises the word perfect and it despises those who want to aspire to be perfect. And really, this is a requirement to be in heaven. The perfection, allowing the Holy Ghost to chip away at the old nature, your old sinful deeds, your old ways, your old man who should have died in the baptism and should have been risen in the newness of Christ. You, this is the purpose of being born again. Your spirit now is born of the Holy Spirit instead of the old nature of Adam who failed, Adam and Eve who had the original sin in the Garden of Eden. But I see a lot of so-called Christians agreeing with Kirk Franklin having a, a reason to use profanity, All right? Having a reason to use profanity. I, wanna, I want you to know that you can sin with your mouth and the sins of your mouth could take you to hell. The sins of your ears agreeing with the words of certain people's mouth could send you to hell. There's a verse in Revelation that talks about those who love a lie, those who lie and those who love a lie. So you could be guilty of loving a lie. Second Thessalonians talks about how God will give you over to, to because you love not the truth, and love lies, I will give you over to strong delusions. So your ears could sin against you. Your ears could lead you into deception and so can your mouth. So Kirk Franklin's mouth was very filthy and I, he didn't have any occasion to speak like that. As a matter of fact, when I listened to the, the, the tape again, I noticed that the boy wasn't even shocked at the language of his father. He wasn't even, he wasn't surprised. He wasn't shocked because he's used to it. So this isn't something that Kirk Franklin is, is new at doing. This is something he does. This is who he is. Okay, your mouth and the words of your mouth will tell people exactly who you are. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Isaiah, the prophet, when he saw God, he said it was the year that King Uzziah died. He said, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. And he said, the angels... The, the angel cried back and forth and he said holy 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 is the Lord of hosts and he said and I covered my mouth and he said I fed, said woe is me I said this is what Isaiah said he said because I dwell in the midst of a people with unclean lips and, and unclean, unclean language and he said I'm not worthy to speak this because I'm guilty of speaking like the people well the angel took a hot coal off the off the the throne and came over and touched the lips of Isaiah with it and he said this hot coal has purged your mouth from all that filth and he says now go and speak the word of the Lord so God is is concerned with our language God is so concerned with our language when you look at the birth of the church the day that the church was born in Acts chapter 2 the day that the Holy Ghost fell the first place the Holy Ghost fell was on their mouth and I can tell you, a person who used to cuss a whole lot and say a bunch of cuss words, I can tell you if they're saved or not. I can tell you if the Holy Ghost touched their mouth because they don't say that stuff anymore. They despise those words. They won't, You won't hear them say that stuff anymore. Never again. They won't slip. Somebody step on their toe. Somebody make them mad. They're not going to say it. In Genesis chapter 11, God confused the language. This was... see. He came down and gave them the Tower of Babel. And the, and the Tower of Babel, it means gate of God or gateway of the gods. And they were, they were building a, a tower up into a portal, up into a gateway. And that gateway was supposed to take them to the throne of God and dethrone God. And you have to listen to the language of people today. People's language lets you know that they are their own God and that they have dethroned God from their life, from their society, from their politics, from their families. They have dethroned God. You know, 
So God said, since you dethroned me, I'm going to give you over to a language. And this language divided the nations in Genesis chapter 11. But in Acts chapter 2, God used language to bring the nations together. They all spoke in unknown tongues or foreign languages. And those foreign languages, the people heard them speak in their language and it drew them. People from around the world heard these people speak in their language. So your language could definitely give you away. Are you speaking the language of heaven? Or are you speaking the language of men? Are you speaking the language that the Holy Ghost will give you? Or are you speaking the language of your own angry heart? And so these type of people like Kirk Franklin need to be avoided. They are not an example of the church. They are not a, an example of, of the converted. They're not an example of being born again. But of course, those of you who are going to agree with that, you haven't been born again. You never experienced a new nature. Because if you experienced a new nature, you'd be saying, hey, that's not it. That's not the genuine touch. See, because everybody that came to Jesus, they came one way. They came as leopards. They came as crippled. They came as lame. They came as dumb. They came as, as deaf. They came as blind. But when they walked away from him, all of those issues were gone. They came in messed up, but they walked away made whole. And if you really, 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 truly have come into contact and repented and turned to Jesus, that Jesus is going to take your old limp. He's going to take your old life, your messed up, your words, your cuss words, your, your, your sexuality. He's going to take all that stuff away from you, give you a clean heart and throw that stuff, that other stuff into the sea of forgetfulness, never to make it rise again. The only way it could come back is if you go back and dig it up. You have to go dig it up yourself. And there's a lot of people that are digging it up. And there's just some people that just never really had a genuine conversion of the spirit. You know, and it's very simple. It's very simple. God, he said, if you come to me, I will in no wise despise you. He won't turn you away, but you got to be willing to walk away from it. Sometimes people are trying to run from a judgment. They try to run from mistakes. They try to, they, they, they're feeling really sorry because they've lost things. They've lost their husband. They lost their wives. Their drug habit and alcohol habit has ruined their life, and they're just really just trying to find a way to get it back. And so the only way they know is to just say, you know, God help me. But they they never really meant it from their heart. They didn't believe on the Lord Jesus. That there's a there's a pattern for salvation. It says, um, believe on the Lord Jesus, turn from your sins and believe on God, and then be filled with the Holy Ghost. It says it, it says repent, turn to God, believe in the Lord Jesus. And receive the Holy Ghost. That's the pattern. But a lot of people never really believe fully on the Lord Jesus, and they definitely don't stay to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know. So that's my thoughts on that. I hope this is this helps you. I hope the words that I've shared with you uh, find room in your heart and strengthen you in Jesus' name. I'm Pastor Jerome. Please subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment. Leave a prayer and share it. Give me a like and a share. All right. Blessings.